So in this video, we're going to talk about the Screendom tool, a fantastic mnemonic that helps us diagnose certain inflammatory and rheumatological conditions. So if you're ready, let's dive in. So the Screendom tool is a fantastic memory aid, first brought out by Paul Cohen in 2018, a specialist physiotherapist in Ireland. This helps us to remember the key signs and traits of certain inflammatory rheumatological conditions which fall under the umbrella of spondyloarthritis. So spondyloarthritis refers to a group of inflammatory arthritis conditions that fall under the broader category of arthritis. Examples include psoriatic arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease associated arthritis, reactive arthritis, and perhaps the most commonly known ankylosing spondylitis, which we now commonly refer to as axial spondyloarthropathy. Spondyloarthritis primarily affects the synovium and the entheses, the sites where tendons, ligaments, or joint capsules attach to the bone. The most common areas for spondyloarthritis to occur are in the spine, the sacroiliac joints, and large peripheral joints, resulting in symptoms including pain, stiffness, and fatigue. So with that in mind, let's dive into the Screendom tool. What does this actually stand for? Well, the first is S for skin changes. Here we might look for signs of psoriasis or a rash over certain joints that might be experiencing spondyloarthritis. C stands for colitis. This is where we find patients might have inflammatory bowel disease such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. The link here is that when multiple inflammatory pathologies in the body seem to be present, it gives a higher suspicion that your patient might have an axial spondyloarthritis. So for example, back pain in a 20 year old who has a previous history of Crohn's or colitis might raise my suspicion that they could have ankylosing spondylitis causing their back pain. R stands for relatives. Here, if my patient explains they have a family history of something like psoriatic arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis, I might be more concerned about the chances of that condition presenting in the patient as well. The first E stands for eye symptoms, where patients might have dry eyes, signs of uveitis or iritis, inflammation within the eyes. And the second E stands for early morning stiffness. Here, in particular, we're looking for prolonged early morning stiffness that lasts for more than 30 to 45 minutes, suggestive of clear inflammatory or rheumatological pathology. So therefore, this might be really important to clarify with your patients how long do you experience stiffness for in the morning. If they're talking about less than 30 minutes, this might be more consistent with something like osteoarthritis, whereas more than 30 to 45 minutes might describe something which is more inflammatory in its nature, such as spondyloarthritis. N stands for nail changes, where patients might have pitting of their nails or detachment of the nail from the nail bed. And D stands for dactylitis, where patients may present with a sausage type appearance to their fingers, very round and very swollen. The final E stands for enthesitis. Remember how we mentioned that spondyloarthritis commonly presents at the entheses, the areas in which tendons, ligaments, or joint capsules attach to the bone. So I'm specifically looking for where patients have pain around tendon insertions or ligament insertions that might be an indication of this. And M stands for movement and medication effect. And this is where we commonly find that patients with different rheumatological conditions, including spondyloarthritis, commonly present with movement effects where movement seems to help their symptoms. They feel better with movement and worse with rest. And the second M stands for medication effect, where commonly patients will improve with non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, as you can imagine, when they have an inflammatory pathology in their body. So how do we actually use this tool in practice? Well, it helps us to bring different pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together to try and work out if our patient is presenting with a form of spondyloarthritis. So for example, if my 28-year-old individual patient presented with a history of Crohn's disease, early morning stiffness that lasted for an hour at a time, a family history of ankylosing spondylitis, and they felt better when they were moving rather than resting, it might prompt me to think that they have a spondyloarthritis such as ankylosing spondylitis. So use the screening tool to try and put different pieces of the puzzle together. 
Now, diagnosing spondyloarthritis as early as possible is incredibly important because it allows the medical profession to help that patient and treat them with the right stuff as early as possible to help manage the impact of their condition. Currently, it's suggested that the point between the first onset of symptoms and the formal diagnosis of spondyloarthritis can be delayed by anything up to 10 years. That's crucial time that is missed in order to try and help the patient manage their symptoms. Therefore, the Screen Dem tool is incredibly useful for helping us get to that early diagnosis. So make sure you use it for your patients in practice. So everyone, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and remember we've got loads of brilliant further resources on our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio, well worth following. My name's Khalid, thank you so much for watching. See you soon, here on Clinical Physio.